Welcome back everyone to the Hello World Guide. This is another episode of the Raycasting in C++ series and in this video we are going to, if you remember in the last video we had uh, a, we basically changed our whole algorithm to use DDA based version which is much more advanced and uh, uh, better and efficient and all that stuff. So in this video we are going to actually finalize that version so that it works with texture as well so that we have got a solid point come like uh, uh, we had earlier with the earlier algorithm. So you can see that we have got all of this and if I run make right now, uh, you can see that we get completely white uh, non-textured walls. So we need to have textures here. Uh, so yeah, how, how exactly are we going to add textures to this? Well, uh, the first thing we'll do is that uh, uh, if I go up here, you can see that uh, we are loading our wall texture in here so you can see we are ruling our wall texture and making sure its size is appropriate all of that stuff here so we can use this texture and draw it here and for that we can of course uh, need to calculate the correct texture coordinates now how exactly are we going to uh, calculate the correct texture coordinates well uh, first of all the first thing we'll need to implement with this is that uh, we'll need to uh, kind of figure out if we, because you know we are drawing columns so the y the actual coordinates on the y axis are going to be pretty much same but on the x axis we'll have to actually uh, change the coordinates so that uh, they are uh, correct and uh, you know make the texture look right so we need to for that we need to actually get uh, where we hit the ray at a, you know relative to the actual map so you know uh, whether we hit it in the center of a tile or to a left side of the tile or wherever we hit it depending on that we'll choose the x coordinates now uh, currently we have got uh, uh, this here so when I uh, when we uh, if we hit we do all of this and another thing by the way that you want to make sure is that uh, uh, we only draw a wall if we actually hit something if we don't hit then we don't want to draw the wall so we are going to go ahead and cut that and actually did hit uh, so we will change this like that so that we only draw a wall if we hit anything we should hit like uh, almost all of the time but uh, in case the map is like left out or if the map is too big then uh, we might sometimes not hit a ray if the wall is too far away or the wall does not exist at all so we need to make sure we don't draw anything if we don't hit anything and now that uh, with that done uh, what we'll do next is that uh, we'll need to uh, figure out that correct texture coordinate so uh, when we are actually putting the texture coordinates if I open up this SF vertex constructor so let me go here open up SF vertex you can see that inside of this uh, we have got a, we've got a constructor that takes a position along with another construction that takes a position with a color and another constructor that takes a position with text coordinates this is the one that we uh, actually require we uh, currently uh, of course we when we add shading in a second we will also require the colors one but for now let's just pass in the texture coordinates so inside of this in order to calculate the exact position of our wall hit we are gonna go here and let's just call this variable wall x even though it could be y uh, but uh, this is the x coordinate of the texture so let's call it wall x and uh, in order to calculate this uh, if our hit is vertical then we need to calculate the x value because uh, you know we were uh, doing the y value if our hit was vertical here well we need to do it the opposite way in here so uh, calculating it is pretty simple we'll just take our ray position dot x uh, Add to that our perpendicular wall distance that we are calculating above and multiply that by our ray directions x and uh, as you can guess uh, if the ray is uh, horizontal then it's uh, pretty much the opposite we'll just say our ray position dot y plus perpendicular wall distance multiplied by ray direction dot y so that's pretty simple and uh, this gives us the exact position of the wall hit well not exactly uh, relative to the wall starting it gives us the position but uh, in order to uh, calculate the position relative to the current wall starting position we will need to subtract the floor of this so for example if we got uh, if we got the uh, if we hit exactly in the middle of the second tile then it uh, then the wall x will be 1.5 and we'll uh, in order to get the relative value we'll take the floor of it which will be uh, the floor of this will be 1 and then we'll subtract this from it and that will give us uh, uh, you know 0.5 so yeah that's uh, that's going to give us the relative value and uh, the texture coordinates are going to be uh, relative to the size of our texture for that I'm going to go up here create a float I'm going to call this 
texture size and uh, you're gonna set this to wall texture dot get size and you can use either x or y here it's completely up to you i'm gonna convert this to a float and uh, the reason you can use any of this is uh, because well this texture is after all a uh, you know uh, scare perfect scare we were verifying that uh, in our init function so now we can go here and uh, we can create another float let's call it texture x and we are going to set this to wall x basically multiply wall x by our texture size and that will give us the correct x coordinate for the texture and since this is uh, completely like uh, vertical sprites our uh, y coordinates are going to cover the whole texture so we don't need to calculate that separately now uh, when we are doing this in here uh, after passing the you know vector 2 argument to the vertex we are going to pass another vector 2f which is going to be our actual uh, texture and uh, uh, texture coordinates I'm going to pass texture X for the X coordinates and for the Y coordinates we are going to just pass in zero here and now I'm gonna go here and copy all of that go here and paste this and in here we'll change one thing which is that we want say zero on the Y instead on the Y we'll say texture size but on the X we'll still say uh, texture X and uh, uh, if I go ahead and run this, what you should see is that, well, we still get completely white and flat walls. Uh, the reason nothing happened is because we, did, or, uh, we do not have any way to pass our wall texture actually. So in order to pass this wall texture, if I open up render.raw, you can see that, uh, uh, well, we are, we are using this, uh, we can pass in some extra render states here, and that is what we need to pass. So we'll create some sf colon colon render states. And let's just call this states and we are going to initialize it with our wall texture this will basically inform the uh, sfml drawing thing that uh, uh, we need to draw with this texture so we'll pass in our wall texture uh, sorry not wall texture our states like that states can also you know have another other initializing it stuff but we only need the texture and uh, with that we have got our textures working as you can see they are working quite well and we are getting uh, everything rendered onto our screen correctly and uh, yeah it's it's uh, pretty awesome so yeah that's uh, that's pretty cool i guess and uh, now let me go ahead and close this i'm going to go here and the only thing that's remaining is that we do not currently have any shading in our texture so to add that we are going to go ahead and say uh, float brightness and we are going to set our brightness to be uh, we have got our perpendicular wall distance so this will give us the actual you know distance and we can take our max ray cast depth well we'll need to uh, if i go up here you can see that we are calculating our max render distance in here so if i take our perpendicular wall distance and divide that by our max render distance divide that by our max render distance and uh, this will uh, give us a higher value if the perpendicular wall distance is higher but we'll actually uh, subtract one from uh, subtract this from one which will give us the uh, actual brightness so after calculating the brightness i'm going to create an sf color just call it color and set this to uh, basically 255 multiplied by brightness on r g and b like that 255 multiplied by brightness 255 multiplied by brightness also uh, another thing is that uh, if our hit is vertical then we are going to go ahead and uh, uh, multiply our brightness by 0 0.75 uh, in order to make sure that it's uh, uh, you know uh, kind of darker on the vertical walls uh, kind of gives a nice effect so with that we can just pass our color here uh, and uh, uh, we are going to pass our color here as well however if i actually run this you can see that the vertical walls are kind of darker however uh, if even if you look really far away that does not seem to be making that big of a difference and the main reason behind this happening is that uh, well now we have got our perpendicular wall distance is map coordinate so we can actually remove the max render distance and everything i'm going to go down here and uh, uh, yeah let's go down here and uh, when we are uh, calculating this, we are going to use basically the max ray cast depth directly because that is uh, uh, the render distance now. We do not need to multiply it by anything. So we are going to use it this way. And now you should be able to see is that it does work and the walls that are farther away are darker and the walls that are vertical are darker as well. So with that, we have got our ray caster with our new algorithm completely working. And in the next video, we are going to finally render textured floors. So stay tuned for that. Make sure to like and subscribe as well and share this video with other people.